Good afternoon and welcome to St. Margaret Lothbury. It's great to have you here with us. And uh, for those of you joining us online, it's great to have you there as well. Um, we're going to start by worshipping together. Um, so why don't we stand? Give thanks to the Lord. Our God and King, His love endures forever. For He is good, He is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise. Sing praise. With a mighty hand. With a mighty hand. Outstretched arm, His love endures forever. For the life that's been reborn, His love endures forever. Sing praise, we worship You, God. Sing praise. in the church building government advises that we sh still shouldn't be singing but uh, we are allowed to speak and I think probably we're allowed to 
shout, um, and we're going to do a new song now. And in the chorus, there's uh, a line which says, "We shout out your praise." So um, I think we'll probably be okay to shout out God's praise for that line. Um, but just make sure it's not very tuneful. Um, just try not to sing it. Try to shout it. Um, but it's called "House of the Lord." We worship to the God who was, we worship the God who is, we worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors, he parted the raging seas, our God, he holds the victory. Let's draw in the house of the Lord, let's draw in the house of the Lord today, we won't be quiet. Your praise, there's joy in the house of the Lord. I got it surely in this place. We won't be quiet, so shout out your praise. We sing to the God who heals, we sing to the God who saves, we sing to the God who always makes a way. Hung up on that cross, you rose up from that grave. My God still rolling stones away. This joy in the house of the Lord, this joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be crying, so shout out your praise. This joy in the house of the Lord, I got it surely in this place. We won't be crying. Your praise, shout out your praise, shout out your praise. We were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're.
Speak out the praises of God. Speaking out our praise, our adoration, our prayers. Come, would you come? Desperate for more of you, oh Lord. The walls come down, all creation, everything with breath, repeat the sound. All his children, clean hands, pure hearts, good grace, good God, his name is Jesus. Worthy is the Lamb. 
Yes, Lord, we know and we declare that you are worthy of our praise today. Lord, that you are good and you are true to your word, faithful to your promises. And your name is worthy of our praise. So we come to you now, Lord Jesus. Would you move in power. Amen. May I repeat the welcome that uh, Will gave earlier. It's great to see you, both those of us who are here and those of us who are joining us online. Thank you very much for coming and thank you, Will, for leading us in worship. We'll be back to you in a few minutes' time. Uh, and uh, may I read to you a few verses from Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 8. Zechariah, this um, uh, minor prophet, he's called, but saying big things uh, just over 500 years before the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And God spoke these words on that particular day to Zechariah. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Now hear these words. Let your hands be strong so the temple may be built. This is also what the prophets said who were present when the foundation was laid for the house of the Lord Almighty. Then verse 11. But now I will not deal with the people as I did in the past, declares the Lord. The seed will grow well. The vine will yield its fruit, the ground will produce its crops, and the heavens will drop their dew. I will give all these things as an inheritance to the remnant of this people. Just as you, Judah and Israel, have been a curse among the nations, so I will save you, and you will be a blessing. Do not be afraid, but let your hands be strong. Even though I love uh, my job, a bank holiday long weekend is always something I love just almost, just as much. Three day weekend. Every time there's a bank holiday, I think actually there is something about me that is hardwired for a three day weekend. When I wake up on a Monday morning and realize this isn't a working day, I begin to ask myself how on earth I actually do work uh, when I just have a two-day weekend, as we all normally have. The only pressure I feel on a bank holiday weekend is what I need to do and what actually can wait for some future indeterminate date. Of course, church on Sunday is always a given. I'd say that even if I wasn't a vicar, but as I am a vicar, it's probably a relief to you all that I do go to church on Sunday. Seeing friends is always a characteristic of a really good bank holiday weekend. Of course, there are always jobs to be done in the garden, in the house. There are always emails to be checked and some even to be responded to. Getting my priorities right, though, is something I want to do, even though it is always a bit of a challenge. What I need to do, what can't be kept waiting, uh, but everything else can just be set aside for some future date. And for Zechariah and his contemporaries, priorities and getting them right were very much what God was talking to them about at this time. And he was particularly talking to, him, to them about sharing his priorities. It hadn't been easy in the time leading up to the moment when he said the words we just read from the Old Testament. It had been a particularly difficult 18 months that they'd gone through. Verses 10 and 11 of Zechariah chapter 8 to make that very clear indeed. A very difficult 18 months. It had been an anxious time for everyone who lived in Jerusalem and the suburbs around it. 
the economy had been so weak it had almost flatlined. People's finances had inevitably been a problem to them. Work had been uncertain and they'd been so busy concentrating on just getting through life all right that God himself had sometimes been sidelined in their lives and in their thoughts. The good news, though, is that it's clear from these verses that God understood completely the impact that times like that had had on his people. Twice he told them, don't be afraid, don't be afraid. And he also went on to reassure him that things were going to change, things were going to get better. The seed will grow well, the vine will yield its fruit, the ground will produce its crops, the heavens will drop their dew. I will give all these things as an inheritance to the remnant of the people. Things are going to get better, he said, after this nightmare 18 months that you've been through. However, he went on to encourage them about the part he wanted them to play. They needed to focus on getting their priorities right so that they could enjoy to the full the better times that were coming. The times when they, they'd have the opportunity to get to know him better and trust him more. Let your hands be strong, he said to them twice. The message version of the Bible puts it much more accessibly when basically God says, get a grip, get a grip, says God. The inst God was so direct because he knew the priorities that they needed to embrace. He wanted to bless them, was determined to bless them. It was the way he put it in that chapter. But that meant putting him first, getting a grip on their lives and on God's agenda. At the time, we, we read uh, in, uh, in the second part of verse 9 that for those people 500 years before the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, that meant getting on with the rebuilding of the temple. The fact that life was going to be better, life was going to be easier, meant they had the time and the resources to focus on this. Not because God had a particular interest in iconic architecture, because it was in the temple there where they would encounter God, receive forgiveness, know the reality of worship, and experience more of his blessings in their lives. Now, of course, 500 years before Jesus, they encountered God in the temple. As Christians, of course, we encounter God in Jesus Christ. We see again and again in the Gospels how the Lord Jesus clearly understood how what people were going through the challenges that they were facing had an impact on their lives. Jesus is very obviously aware that people didn't live in a spiritual vacuum. And as he engaged with them, it's clear though most of all, he wanted to bless them, just as his heavenly father had wanted to do. To bless them by bringing forgiveness, healing, direction, hope, a clear sense of his presence in their lives. And we know from our own experience that nothing has changed. The norm with Jesus is what he wants to do most of all for you and for me is to bless us. We should expect blessing. That's what he wants us to experience. And all he asks of us 
is what his father asked of those people 500 years before his birth, is to work to make his priorities our priorities, to focus on him so we don't get complacent when things are going well and life gets back to being smooth and things seem to be working out for us as we'd want them to work out. To seek his priorities so we can receive the blessing he wants to give us. We need to embrace those priorities. And as we do so, the Spirit of Jesus will bless us more and more. And as I reflected on this, I thought, now Lord, where do my priorities need to change? On Saturday afternoon, it was um, doing some weeding in the garden rather than sitting down and reading the newspaper, which is what I wanted to do. And so often in my Christian life, there are things I know I should do, but there seem to be so much more fun things to do rather than addressing the priorities God has. The encouragement, though, is he wants to bless us. God says, I am determined to bless us. And Jesus says the same. As Will comes and leads us in worship, now let's just stand, shall we, together, and just say to the Lord, Lord, I want to receive your blessing. I want to receive every ounce of the blessing you have for me. You know we're still coming out of the 18 months when things are difficult. You know that things are uncertain. You know we get anxious, Lord. But we believe your promises that good times are coming. We want to be ready for those. We want to embrace your priorities, but we need your blessing. And know you're determined to bless us. Come, Spirit of the living God, I pray. Come bless us today. Come bless us today.
His favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may His presence go before you behind you beside you all around you and within you He is with you He is with you in the morning and the evening and you come and you go weeping and rejoicing He is for you 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 This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I come to you. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Prepare for me the presence of my enemies. It's your body and your blood you shed for me. This is how I fight my battles. And I believe you've overcome. This 
This is how And I love you, Lord. Though your mercy never fails me, and all my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I leave my bed, I will sing of the goodness of God. I worship you. 
that uh, description of God jumping out, a uh, promise keeper, and I just had a feeling that there's someone here who the Holy Spirit wants to encourage afresh by saying that God is indeed the promise keeper. He will be faithful to his promises, even though you may be waiting for those promises to be fulfilled he will be faithful. I think just couldn't help feeling there's someone who needed to hear that underlined today. Thank you, Lord. Yes, you know I don't see it, you work. When I don't feel it, you work it. You never stop, you never stop working. You never. 
Die. 